Hey knitters, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I'm your host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. As always, find my Instagram, Ravelry, Ko-Fi, Patreon, linked in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, designers, makers that I talk about in this week's episode. Um, we are past the halfway mark of my birthday month, and this is my first year of my life in which I say, good freaking riddance, oh my god. Um, <laughs> I have uh, loved my birthday month, you know, since I was aware of the concept of a month. Uh, it's a tradition my mother and I started, and last year, my first year without her, I dedicated all my energy to throwing myself a birthday party with all my friends. Um, and it was wonderful and it was fun, but it really was a distraction that was very much needed. And this year I'm not really doing that. I'm going to San Diego where my cousin lives, but I visit her so frequently that it's pretty routine. There's no, there's nothing to plan. So instead my brain has been like, hey, how about we uh, mess you up? And that's what it's been. It's been a lot of ugly crying, but that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about the good stuff. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff. I'm surrounded by beautiful yarn. I reorganized my yarn stash um, while I was thinking about what to show you guys. Uh, some people asked to see more of my stash, which I thought was weird because for the past, you know, year plus, y'all have seen everything come in. Y'all have seen me work up a lot of stuff. So I was like, surely they can't want to see more yarn. Um, to which the resounding answer was, we actually do. We want to see more yarn. So your wish is my command. Um, I'm not gonna show you all a ton because I don't have a ton that y'all haven't already seen, um, but there's just a little bit. Uh, before we get to it, the yarn stuff, I will show you what I've been working on. Um, what I recently finished as of like an hour ago is my Brooklyn Raglan test knit. This is for Tori Knits. I've shown you guys this before, but I finally finished the second sleeve. It is a little bit oversized. Uh, that's my bad. That's my bad. Um, I think I just didn't gauge swatch. Sorry, Tori. My bad. But I love oversized sweaters, especially with the raglan, because the raglan, like, it creates that seamed look, so it gives your body structure without it being form-fitting. So I think actually an oversized raglan is one of the more flattering fits you can do oversized and I love it. I tried it on and it's so cute. Like for fall, it's gonna be chef's kiss, like so cute. Um, as a reminder, I did House of Island Loads, House Tweed DK. I pulled out a lot of the tweed. My friend Andrea went in the comments and she, when, I, when I showed people the finished object and she was like, yeah, but what happened to all that tweed though? And I was like, how dare she come onto my space I'm kidding. When I say stuff like that, um, so I realize there's like a generational difference between that kind of humor. I'm joking when I say stuff like that. Like, how dare she? Like, that's so rude. I'm joking. Like, she and I are really, really good friends and she's just calling me out as a joke. I pulled out a lot of the tweed is what I'm trying to say. Um, but that texture fabric is gorgeous, especially with this rich colorway and it's the perfect autumnal sweater. You can see that high-low hem detail I was telling you about. Get that sleeve behind me. You can see a little bit better. I decided to steam block this instead of wet block. I usually prefer wet blocking. Uh, with steam blocking, what, what I do is I get out my ironing board and I just use the steamer on my iron. If you don't have an iron, there are like stand-up steamers, ha handheld steamers, and you can buy them anywhere on the internet. Um, but this high low hem detail, I really like. It makes it look um, just a little bit more polished. I just really love that. And the neckline, uh, I talked to Tori, she is doing a like tighter neckline on the finish pattern or she's having that option, I forget which, but she is looking at it. But like I said, for me as a person who really likes wide necklines, like I, I love it. I think it's really cute. And I just, I love this thing so much. I can't wait for it to get cool so I can actually wear it and not wanna die. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. And I know a lot of y'all are too, because like sweater weather is a knitter's time to shine and summer, summer can still be a knitter's time to shine. We'll just be less happy about it um, because this is, oh yeah, before I talk about, 
I showed you guys this before and when I talked about the summer hand knits. Um, I made this for my mom. It's the Maryfield. I modded it to have like short A-line sleeves. Um, it was her Mother's Day present one year. So, um, yeah. Um, sorry, I don't want to cry in this week's episode. So, yes, let's get right continuing. <laughs> I started a new cast on and it's at an awkward stage to show you guys because it is a cardigan. So um, I feel like before a cardigan really takes shape, it looks like nothing. It looks bad. And it does right now. Um, the fabric is beautiful. So let me first talk about the construction. This you see right here is the collar. It's going to fold over. Oh God, there's so much yarn. <laughs> It's gonna fold over like this and it's gonna have this kind of dramatic increased collar section. And then the sleeve is obviously a drop shoulder design so I have to pick up for the sleeves later on. Um, the actual neck band past the collar uh, has the ribbing on the side so I don't have to pick up for anything. I'm working the button band as I go and it's just, it's really pretty fabric. Let me show you guys the yarn that I'm using individually. So this one is Earl Grey Fabric Company. You guys might recognize it from my Portland trip, Portland haul. It is Queen of Hearts on her Darjeeling sock. That's 75, 25, um, 75 Superwash Merino, 25 nylon. That tends to be my favorite base because in terms of plumpness and yardage, can't be beat. Um, paired with, is it a pair? No, it's combined with um, combined with two strands of mohair. So I decided to really oomph up, oomph, oomph up the plumpness. Try saying that with a retainer in your mouth. Um, yeah, so this middle one is the Kinetic Knitter in the colorway Love Spell on her mohair base. And this one is just, whoop, if I don't drop everything. I have to drop something each episode. It's tradition now. This is actually undyed mohair. I order my undyed mohair from Black Squirrel Berkeley. Um, they're a yarn store in the Bay Area in San, near San Francisco, and I really like working with them. Um, their undyed base is called, Ec, or colorway is called Ecru Brute. You know, um, goes back to Caesar. Anyway. Their undyed mohair is actually pretty reasonably priced. Um, so I don't like buying from dyers undyed mohair because there are some dyers who still charge their regular mohair price, which I have an issue with. Not calling out people who do that. I understand that y'all have a wholesale account, things go into that, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But also, there's no labor that goes into, well, there's very, very minimal labor that goes into skeining and labeling undyed mohair. Cause you just literally receive it from the wholesaler, skein it, whatever, and then sell it. So it seems disingenuous to charge the same price as something like this that's been dyed, like labor goes into it. But anyway, that's the whole thing. Black Squirrel Berkeley charges a very reasonable price. I think it's like 15 or 16 bucks a skein, um, as opposed to like a dyed skein, which is like, I think the going average price these days is like 29 for a skein of mohair. So yeah, I think it's completely reasonable. Um, and white mohair, people have asked like, can you talk about how mohair behaves? And it's really depending on the type of yarn. I White mohair is predictable because it's just white. So the way I think about mohair, working with mohair, is it's almost like working with watercolor. You can kind of predict how the colors will react to each other because the halos, um, the fuzz, the halo, interacts with the uh, existing colors to kind of uh, muddle together. So you can predict how it'll go, but depending on how crazy the colors are, it gets much, much harder to predict. So if you're ever unsure about how a mohair is going to interact with your fabric, knit a swatch. Um, I actually, for this one, I decided to use this yarn after I had already swatched with another one. I just didn't like how the main yarn, this the fingering was interacting with these mohairs and I knew for sure I wanted to use these mohairs. So I swapped and now I love it. 
um, the close-up fabric is here. Yes, it's really beautiful. The speckles are very delicate, which you guys know I love. And the design itself, it's hard to see now, obviously, because it's nothing right now. But the design itself is going to have this really dramatic V-neck um, collar and like Peter Pan collar and then a ruffle around the Peter Pan collar. So it's excessively feminine and delicate. So I think the, this colorway really goes well hand in hand with that. So that's what it's going to become. Just a ridiculously feminine cardigan. And y'all know me, I don't normally knit cardigans. I, get, I knit like one a year and it's usually a neutral color. But with this design, I was like, oh no, it's over the top in the collar area. So I'm gonna go over the top. And that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Then I have this whip I've been working on. I've been whipping out whips like no one's business. I haven't been knitting a lot, but when I have, I've been very stressed out while I was knitting. So when I get stressed, I knit faster. And um, that's just what's been happening. Um, so my, what is this? Outline Raglan by Jessie May, test knit in progress. Uh, I finally like started decreasing the front so you can actually see that design starting to form. Obviously I haven't done the drop stitch yet because I haven't reached the bottom of the body, but we are getting close. So I'm hoping to have this done um, in the next week so that I can bring it to San Diego and wear it on the beach because I feel like tinsel and the beach match made in heaven. Um, yeah, not a lot has been done on this since I showed it to you guys last, so. But I just, I'm working on it, I'm plugging away, and it's really pretty. I love the way it feels. Um, Terrapin Fibers is who dyed that colorway, this colorway. Um, and I think it was called, was it Gentle Reader? Deserving, it was Deserving and it's this lovely peachy colorway she has been cranking out a lot of great colorways i told you guys about the red onion one but she's also put out this colorway called garlic and it is the most stunning neutral i've ever seen in my life um she put out this uh, sage colorway that makes me want to scream it's so pretty i don't do a lot of greens but that's one that just like knocked me off my feet it was so beautiful She's a dyer to look out for. And like I said in last week's episode, she does plant-based fibers only. So like cotton, tinsel, etc. cetera. And um, so if you are a vegan knitter um, and want to use like ecologically friendly source material, she's a great one to look out for. Really love her stuff. Okay, and then the last whip I have to show you guys is my Allie's sweater. Um, this is by S Knits. It is her first garment design, if I'm remembering correctly. And she has, she just put out the call for Ali's T. So Ali's T has this color work motif, but on the bottom um, and a plain raglan up top. But this is the Ali sweater and I am using Explorer Knits, the eponymous Ali of Explorer Knits. Um, I actually had a fail, a color fail. So people have said that I'm like amazing at picking colors, blah, blah, blah. Guys, I get stuff wrong all the time. I am just a person. And to show you, to prove to you, this was my first one. Um, I didn't get far because I realized that the color work, it just did not have enough contrast at all. It was just ridiculous. Like there are parts that do because this colorway that I was going to use, Giant's Causeway, is one of her variegated colors from the Ireland collection. But my goodness, if it did not blend in with the linen base color too, 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 too much. And I saved this little failure to show you guys. Um, that's why we swatch. I do not, but that's me. Like, do as I say, not as I do. That's my advice. Um, because I'm okay with wasting my own time. But if y'all are one of those, some of those people that really don't like to waste time, that really want your, whatever you put effort into to be wearable first try, swatching is the best way to ensure it. Because yes, you spend time swatching that little thing, but it may save you the trouble because I guarantee a swatch would have taken me less time than this thing. 
but with my personality, I just, I'm the type of person who just jumps in regrets and all. I feel like that's like the theme of my entire life. Wow, okay, that was a moment. Anyway, um, the colorways I am using are Untamed, uh, that's the pink, and Moonstone. So Moonstone is one of those colorways that is super hard to explain because, especially with the uh, color work, because you lose some of the effect. Moonstone as it is. This one, this is Moonstone on a sock weight, but you can see all the variegation. Yes, it's primarily white, but there's also blues, there's also pinks. Um, it's really stunning. I have a lot of Moonstone. Don't judge me. Some of us just know what we like. <laughs> I just, I say that because I have Moonstone on literally three bases. I have never been that person to have something on multiple bases, except when it comes to Moonstone. I have Moonstone here on DK. I have Moonstone here on Surrey. Moonstone here on MCN fingering weight. So I love this colorway. And the interplay with this color work is just phenomenal. I am so obsessed with this. I actually finished the yoke in less than two days. Um, which I forgot how much I love color work. I haven't done a color work since early spring. I think it was my first Tori Knits uh, pattern, the Butterfly Blooms, if you guys recall. And that was back in April, March. So it's been a while. And this flew off. Oh God, it was so good. And the back looks like this. So the back and front, um, you use short row shaping and the color work is different. So it's very easy to tell what is the front. And I'm just obsessed. Um, the bottom, you do a contrast hem uh, bind off. So you can do, um, what should we call it? What do they call that? Ooh, it's not provisional. Oh my God, sorry, I'm just having a brain moment. Um, you could do that stupid sewn looking bind off that you do with like a million and one stitches. I, little sneak about me, um, I only do long tail cast on and regular bind off. It is what my mother taught me. It is all I do. I went through a phase where I did a lot of like provisional cast on, especially if I wanted to make something seamless, blah, blah, blah. But then I learned, I'm like, I could just three needle bind off this. I could pick up stitches, three needle bind off. It looks just as nice. Like I don't see the point. If you are one of those people who loves all those fancy cast ons, bind offs, Go ahead, right on, good for you. I'm not one of those. I do not like it. Um, I've done projects with them before. To me, it just, it didn't seem to add a lot to the finished object. Um, yeah, that's, that's just me. And if I could remember the name of that bind off, it would be much more beneficial. But y'all know I don't edit. I just start talking and then finish talking and that's the video, so. That's what you get. Sorry, you guys. Um, yeah, I have started on the sleeve just like a little bit and I'm gonna be working on this. So hopefully I will have it done for San Diego as well. I'm hoping to have two things at least for FO photos while I'm over there. Um, yes. So let's talk birthday stuff. Um, like I said, last year I did like a really big party. Well, not a really big party. I'm not a big party person. Um, I had like 10 friends from work and knitting all meet in one thing, which was a little bit weird because I'm the type of person who like really likes compartmentalizing. Um, so if I choose how to have spend my time, I would rather have a work friend night one night and then a, a knitting friend occasion another time separate and that's what i'm doing this year so my knitting friends actually we all have summer birthdays so we've decided instead of doing a bunch of summer birthdays in like the season what we're gonna do is compile them all into one day so my best friends megan and Jana and i what we're gonna do is we are renting a room at this very very fancy hotel in park city park city is a resort town about 30 minutes outside of salt lake it's where all the skiing resorts are and during the summer they're still open for business because it's lovely hiking and it is much cooler up there because you're up in the mountains and it's beautiful and there are fancy restaurants cute little main streets blah 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 so what we're, what we're gonna do is we're renting a room doing a little staycation 
and um, that'll be our birthday thing. And I have a little surprise about like what we're going to do while we're there. And I don't want to tell you guys yet, but it's going to be super cute is what I'm saying now. Um, yes. And I'm not, we're doing the present swap at that. And that's going to be next month in August. So I'm not expecting any gifts to show you guys from them. I did, however, receive some things. So from me, I bought myself a present because I'm used to buying myself presents. It is this. Um, I got this from Hohe and Co's, Hohe and Co's um, second sale. So you can see there's this pretty big uh, scratch on the front. And um, it wasn't actually highly discounted. And for this kind of imperfection, I would think it would be a higher discount um, because that's what happens with second sales. There's like something that's cosmetically wrong um, so they wouldn't sell it at full price. But I feel like this kind of scratch is like pretty substantial, but that's just my, that's just me, you know? Uh, maybe you guys disagree, I don't know. But to me, it looks pretty noticeable. It's pretty noticeable. Um, but this is a interchangeable needle case in the colorway rose gold. And y'all know I use the Lika, Lika, whatever interchangeables. Oh, no, that's not this. I can't reach. My short arms can't reach. I use the Leek, Leeka no, interchangeables, but um, I am actually planning on buying a new set probably for Christmas. Um, I'm spreading out <laughs> how well I treat myself. Um, uh, it's called Lantern Moon. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I wish I had it to show you, but I haven't bought it yet. Um, it's wood, but it's a highly polished wood interchangeable set. So my issue with the Lika ones that I use, they tend to have that wood grain texture. And I've tried sanding and repolishing, but it it's not as smooth as it would be if it, they just did it in factory, like they changed the standard, whatever. So I have felt Lantern Moon at uh, the local yarn store in town in Salt Lake, Blazing Needles, and it's actually very highly polished. Um, you can't feel the wood grain and it's got a beautiful finish. The only issue is I hate their case. Their case is ugly to me and I don't like it. Um, and I know that's so silly, it shouldn't matter, but it does because I am a person who really cares about aesthetics in case you guys haven't noticed. Um, so when I saw this on second sale, I was like, perfect, I'll get an interchangeable case and I'll get the Lantern Moon set that I like because I like their needles and then I can just trash that ugly case. It's not, it's just my personal preference. If you guys like the case, you like it, that's fine. It's just, I personally don't like it, okay? Um, but yeah, that's what this is going to be for. There's slots where you can put the needles in and then there's slots for uh, the cords and that's just, it is what it is. It's an interchangeable needle case. I don't really know what there is to say about it, except for I wish that it was a little bit more discounted considering the really noticeable scratch on the front. Yeah, yeah, but it is what it is. I really like the feel of the leather. Um, you guys know I already have a Hohe & Co bag, that pink one that I used while I was in New York and on other trips, like you've seen it in pictures. Um, I really love the leather of that. Um, this is the first metallic one I've gotten from them. And um, I really like the feel. So that'll be the interchangeable set. Um, I also got in my Ireland collection candles from Explorer Knits and Wax and Wool. So Explorer Knits, whenever she does a collection, not all the time, but many of our collections, she partners with Wax and Wool to create uh, exclusive scents. These are the two scents from the Ireland collection. There is Gaelic Rose and Celtic Sea, and they smell incredible. Like, I have a lot of wax and wool candles, but I think these might be my two favorite ever. Um, Gaelic Rose, it's obviously floral. It does have rose notes, but it's very complex and it's not overpoweringly floral. Like, it doesn't smell like like a grandmother's perfume it, it smells actually quite lovely and Celtic Sea there's notes of like salt there's oceanic breeze elements to it it's it's very subtle um it builds and that's what I really love about wax and wool scents they build as you they go and it's never overpowering because I like to leave these burning for hours at a time um and they're soy they have a 
They have a clean burn and a long burn, and they last a long time. But yeah, these are the two candles that I got coming in. I'm still waiting on my Ireland Collection yarn, um, but you guys know when I went to Denver, I got a lot of the Ireland Collection anyway. So it's not like I'm pressed for it right now. Um, I also have this, just dropping more stuff, don't mind me. I also have this bag from Knitting Nelly. Um, funny story, my friend Megan, like, she was obsessed with getting a, a Knitting Nelly bag for, since I've known her for more than a year. And she finally got one, this one, exact one, and she ordered another one just in case because they are, they are really hard to get. Her shop updates go real quick. Um, and my friend Shanna at the time was wanted it more, so Megan gave the second one to her. Shanna, after using it for a while, was like, I actually don't use this as much. And she knows I love knitting for Nelly bags, or knitting Nelly bags. So now it came to me and it's very cute. I keep a lot of my whips in this now. Um, yeah, it's really cute. I just, I love the look of the patchwork. I love the cohesive color scheme and it matches my palette really well. Um, yeah, big fan, love that. And then, uh, the last gift that I'm going to show you guys is a gift from my friend Andrea, the Knitting PT, and it is so good. Y'all are going to lose your damn minds because it is so good. This is from Moondrake, obviously, and it is a skein of Surrey and a skein of Slub Fingering on her colorway Unicorn Cloud. Unicorn so pretty and to show you guys it better I got she gave me two Andrea gave me two I took it apart so these are each bundle is a skein of mohair and a skein of fingering slub so I took it apart so you can see the colorway a little better and it is just so freaking beautiful it is exactly what I dreamed of when I first saw the pre-order going live and I remember I was showing this to Andrea. Andrea can't work with mohair or surrey. She finds it too itchy for her sensitive skin, um, but she knows that I love the stuff. And um, when I sent this to her, I was like, oh my God, I'm too broke to order yarn right now, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, don't order it because now it's coming to you for your birthday. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. So here it is and it's so beautiful. Like, can you even? It's so pretty. I kind of just like want to wear it around my neck as like a statement piece. This in itself is a scarf. Yes, I make scarves now. Yeah, I'm just going to tell people that. Actually, it doesn't look bad, really. Um, yeah, so that's the last birthday present that I have and it's so dang good. Um, in terms of yarn I had to show you guys, I'm, I'm actually going to take this off my neck, not because it's not beautiful. It is, I think we can all agree. But it is so hot and so like. Okay, um, the yarn that I'm going to show you guys. First one is from Less Traveled Yarn. I always think their name is interesting because like their website, what's on the label, and I think their Instagram name are all very different. It's like Less Traveled Yarn, Traveling yarn, I think, on Instagram or their website. It's just for me, I'm like, less traveled and traveling yarn have like diametrically opposed messages, don't they? Like, yarn, traveling yarn evokes like, oh, this is yarn for traveling. And then less traveled yarn it implies the opposite. So then it's like, what is the truth, really? Um, but that's just me being weird. Um, but this colorway. Because I know y'all are just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> At least I would be. Um, this colorway is called Poetic Perry. And it is so beautiful. The best way I can describe it is, you know those like bright blue, bright purple hydrangeas? I love hydrangeas, by the way. They're really big in Korea because they're so pretty and beautiful and um, lovely colors. I especially love the blue ones. You would think I like the pink ones just because I like pink more, but the blue purple ones are really what gets me because they're so dreamlike. And that is this colorway. Exactly. Um, this base is actually her dreamliner base. So what that is, is 70% BFL, that's blue faced, blue faced luster, 
and 20% silk and 10% cashmere. So it is chock full of luxury fibers and uh, it's beautiful. Like obviously the fibers are luxury and stunning, but this colorway is just ethereal. I have no other way to describe it. Um, I have a full sweater quantity, don't know what I'm gonna make yet, but it is so beautiful that for now, I kind of just like holding on to it because it's, it's just stunning. Um, another thing that I got, these are all old. None of these are brand new. Um, they've been in my stash for many months, but I didn't, I don't think I showed you guys them last time I did a stash show and tell. So this is from Olin, Olin Fibers. They're based in Ireland. Um, they ethically source their yarns. So that's really cool. And this colorway is called Milk and it is just a white creamy base with a bunch of speckles. Like, look how pretty these are. Y'all know, I, I love a white creamy speckle. Um, it's just really pretty. And I have a full sort of quantity of this. Don't know what I'm gonna make with it. I think I originally envisioned um, holding a white mohair with it. Um, I don't know for, for what pattern yet, don't ask me, but it is so beautiful. I love it. And the speckles are very, very delicate, which you guys know is my thing. And then another thing for delicate speckles, I got this, this yarn. Um, she is local to Utah, um, Yarnaceous Fibers. Um, I really like the dinosaur logo. I think that's really cute. I got this from Seed Stitch and you can see St Seed Stitch's logo right there. Um, Seed Stitch, I've talked about many times is another local yarn store. It is just north of Salt Lake, about a 10 minute drive on the highway um, in Bountiful. And it's in that cute little town square with a bakery and a coffee shop and a plant store. So I really love going on the weekends. It's just a really nice place to spend my time. Um, and this colorway was exclusive to Seed Stitch for local yarn shop, local yarn store day, which was earlier in the spring. I don't remember when. Um, but your girl was going through it around that time, <laughs> so I didn't talk about it, but it is really beautiful. It's this white, purpley, pink variegated base with speckles, but it's a subtle variegation, which you guys know is very important to me as a garment knitter. If it's uh, dramatically variegated, it's really hard to do a cohesive fabric. Um, just one piece. Some people choose to do it and that's a whole different look, but it's not my look. So that's why I gravitate towards a soft transition. But again, it's all personal preference, but I really love this colorway. It is called Pink Petalite. Petalite. It's really hard to enunciate with this retainer. Um, but yeah, I really love it. Love it. And I love the fact that my friend's little logo's right there. And another thing while I got at Seed Stitch during local yarn store day was this bundle. Bundle of two is actually enough to make a rocket tee. I think rocket tee is by Tannis Fiber Arts if I'm remembering correctly. But if I am not, everything will be linked in the description below. Um, but yeah, so one skein of fingering, one skein of mohair will be enough for most sizes, not all. I don't think all, but most sizes. And um, the yarn that I chose is the Farmer's Daughter. This is the Farmer's Daughter. Um, the colorway is the girl on Webster Street on their Squish Fingering base, which is their 100% Superwash Merino base. Um, it's really stunning. Um, again, I love a white speckle yarn. And um, this mohair is from the Plucky Knitter. It is, uh, Lavender in Bloom is the colorway. And it's just this very, very cool toned but delicately done variegated mohair. And it'll be held. So the way that it works is there's fingering weight stripes and mohair stripes, um, pretty big blocks of stripes. But I thought it, I mean, I had to get it. So Kim's mother, uh, Kim's mother is in the shop like every weekend and she was wearing a rocket tee and her version looks so beautiful, so good, that I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna get this. Um, so that, I got it and it's lovely. Okay, and that's really everything I had to show you guys. Um, I know it's not a huge stash show and tell, but I feel like in terms of time, 
I had plenty to talk about. Um, thank you guys as always for your patience with me. Um, it has not been an easy couple weeks, but we are almost through the birthday month. We're almost done. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I really do appreciate all your support. Um, today is Allie's Alley of Explore and it's ice cream social update day. So I'm wearing these ice cream earrings. It's like a rosette on an ice cream cone and it looks so cute. It was actually gifted to me by a knitter, Cassandra, Knit with Nimbus. She's gonna be linked too. She's great. Um, I'll also link the makers of the earring if you guys want. So I don't know when these videos upload. The last one uploaded in literally 15 minutes less and it was done. And I was like, well, shoot, ooh. Uh, so I don't know when this will be uploaded, but if it is uploaded by the time Ali's update goes live, Best of luck to you all, because I, I'm, I'm gonna be ready. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that more once the yarn comes in, because I know I'm getting yarn in that. Um, but anyway, it's lovely to see you guys. Sorry I've been so up in my feelings. Um, I will see you guys very soon. Uh, if not before San Diego, then as soon as I get back. Have fun knitting. Love you all. Bye.